What's going on YouTube? Levi at Old Iron Off-Road out here today and boy do we have a banger of a video for you. Up until this point, the availability of wiring harnesses specifically for the Scout 2 has been severely limited. Super Scout Specialist actually did make a factory replacement harness the only issue with that harness is it didn't address some of the inherent design flaws that were in the original design of the wiring harness. Now there were two designs of the wiring harness. There was an early model and a late model. Somewhere around 78, I believe they changed to a later style connection point that actually clamshelled together on the driver's side of the firewall beside the brake booster, which was inherently a better design than the previous one. The main issues with the factory wiring harness were they weren't designed to handle electrical requirements of accessories that we like to run on our vehicles today. Your options were limited as far as a, ha a harness to a factory replacement harness from Super Scout Specialist. I have had my hands on that harness. That was a very good harness. Um, I don't know if they're still in production. They may be, so don't quote me on that or a universal harness. Now, the most people chose to go with the universal harness, but the issue with the universal harness is you had to have extensive knowledge of electrical systems and how 12 volt functioned. Otherwise, you were kind of lost and shooting in the dark. It was definitely not something for a novice, and it wasn't specifically designed for the Scout 2. It was basically a kit that you had to rob circuits and jockey stuff around to get what you needed out of the harness. Well, not anymore. American Auto Wire has came out with this kit. It's a 510838 for the 71 to 1980 International Scout specific. <clears throat> it is a dedicated harness. It is complete and it is the version of the later model harness, which again does have some design improvements. They have also included a big charging wire that goes directly back to the battery via a couple of mega fuses. And that will take care of some of the draw issues and allow you to use some of the accessories that you're gonna wanna use that do require more power. Now this is a complete kit as I stated. This isn't a universal aftermarket harness. It is complete with most of the terminations pre-made for you, which takes a lot of guesswork and the confusion and I guess aggravation or stress of what would be somebody that isn't super familiar with electrical components and 12 volt circuits to install this by yourself. I'm not gonna say that this is 100% for a beginner. If you have zero knowledge of a 12 volt system, I don't know if this is for you, but it's a lot closer than what you had before. Um, it comes with several pre-packaged and pre-terminated harnesses that are all plug and play. This is a front lighting harness kit. This is the charging circuit. This is the main dash harness with integrated fuse panel and comes with everything behind the dash is pre-terminated. They include an engine harness again with a connector, lighting kit with pre-terminated Bulb connectors, now this is gonna use, like I said, this is more designed towards the 77, 78 model Scouts, which again, in my mind, is a better design, but there are gonna be some things that you have to change or make happy. They have pretty much thought of everything. Now, I haven't actually had the chance to install one of these yet, but while I was at Mike Moore's shop, Scout Co. LLC, I did actually get to see one of these going in a Scout, and it was, it was pretty well thought out, and that's what has moved us to that point. Previously, we would just install a quick wire harness and, and go on about our lives. Um, this is what I really thought was cool. This is a gauge cluster kit. This actually plugs into existing pre-terminated wires on the dash harness side. And this basically allows you to either wire in the factory gauges. They give you a complete pin out, the proper Molex connectors and pins to run the factory gauges, or you can not terminate the ends of the wires and you can put ring terminals on to run aftermarket gauge panels. So that was a really nifty little piece. They actually include a new headlight switch a new dimmer switch in the floor, which are always components that you need to replace, or I do anyway. So yeah, 
really, really, really well thought out and really planned out kit. I hope I can make this interesting and entertaining because sometimes picking through wiring can be somewhat monotonous. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. I will say I have previously stripped all the wiring out of this Scout and as well as the dash to make way for all of this. So we're starting with a blank slate. But the first thing that I'm going to cover is the adaptation of the firewall for this later model style fuse panel. So let's get it. So here we are at the firewall. I don't know how well you can see that, but previously the connections for the engine compartment and the tail light harness were made through connectors that went into the firewall here and here. And lighting side was in a hole somewhere over in this vicinity. I don't remember. Yeah, right here behind this little guy. Um, that was the early style harness. The later model harness is, ha is actually sandwiched between the firewall here and the fuse is plugged directly into the back side of this. Now, the early and the late model fuse pa panels for the Scout 2 were both the glass style fuses. One good thing about this kit is it does upgrade you to a modern style fuse. They included this nice little stick on template that allows you to cut out the exact pattern. So you will have to remove your brake booster because the alignment actually references three of the bolt holes along the edge of the brake booster. So we've got this guy placed in place. We've got to drill two holes to an eighth of an inch and then we have to cut out this opening. And we should be at ready at that point to go ahead and install the fuse panel. And here is a finished shot of the bulkhead slash fuse panel connector coming through the new modified space in the firewall. And here is the new fuse panel as well as the integrated dash wiring harness with mostly pre-terminated ends. You can see here is the headlight switch. Uh, I'm not sure about these guys. I'm not sure about this guy. I'm not sure about this guy. Dimmer switch, brake light, the ignition switch is pre-terminated as well as the steering column. All right, so we've got the main dash harness and fuse panel installed. One thing that I just noticed as I was digging through this fuse box is I was thinking I was gonna have to go rob the courtesy light sockets out of another part scout and just happened to notice in the dash lighting or the dash um, dash harness kit that it even comes with new pre-terminated courtesy lamp sockets and plugs this plugs into the existing harness just like a factory would this plugs into the ground switch for the door and here's your light bulb socket so that's pretty cool this is going to be a nice little kit I'm, I'm pretty happy with this so far um, this is the layout for the entire dash harness it tells you everything where it pins out where it goes and for the most part, this thing is gonna be plug and play. I think there are gonna be some crimps that have to be made as far as actual Packard connectors, but that's not a big deal. And what we have here are the actual harness connectors. This is the tail light section. This is the headlight section, and this is the engine section. And what makes this kit better than the other ones is it actually has a lot more solid connection points um, than the original bulkhead. It plugs directly into the back of the fuse panel too, so that's always. Plus, these guys lock together, just like so. And then you have one 
screw that basically retains this into the plug. All right, so we are inside the passenger compartment and wanted to just show you quickly how um, complete this kit is. We're gonna plug up the wiper switch and here you can see you have the wiper switch. This shows you the wiper switch connections. You've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got blue, red, green, black, and white wire, which I have already located here in this little nifty bundle. So if we follow our directions, it says, plug onto original wiper washer switch not included with this kit. See page 11 for detailed connections. So if we flip over to page 11, we get a pretty detailed connection. You can actually compare the backside of the old wiper switch to the diagram. We've got battery, park, low speed, washer, and high speed. That's pretty impressive. Um, previously, you would have to identify circuit numbers and dig through a factory service manual to really get an idea of how this works. I'm gonna take some contact cleaner and attempt to clean this guy up a little bit and we will get it hooked up. So we got it cleaned up looking reasonable and we're gonna basically hold the wiper switch just in the same direction that we have. Everything's color coded. So we've got blue, green, red, white, and black. Put us a little tie wrap around there to bundle that up nice. And that was the easiest wiper switch I've ever installed. And now for my next trick, we're gonna install a headlight switch. I just went and harvested this one fresh out of the uh, package. I didn't have to go on eBay or Amazon or the parts store and buy it or anything. And we line the plugs up and presto. Headlight switch installed, very nice. We've also hooked up the courtesy lights on both sides and got them plugged up. I still have to replace the uh, ground switches in the doors, but everything's there and laid out and nice. And I believe we still got a few more connectors to go through. We're gonna keep on trucking through it though. All right, so here we are back in the shop. We've actually worked through this just a little bit more. Um, really the only thing that we have done at, is made connections that were already existing there was already a drop for the neutral safety switch. There was already a drop for the ignition switch. And obviously the steering column was already pinned out. Um, the heater is plugged in. The lamp for the heater is there. Uh, we've got a couple of extra. One of these is for a cigarette lighter. I'm actually gonna put another charging port in the dash. There's another 12 volt accessory there. Um, again, we've ran, so with this being an automatic, obviously there is a neutral safety switch. So the pigtail for the neutral safety switch is there. If you decide not to use that, or if you're running a manual, there is a jumper that bypasses that. Um, there's a pigtail that connects in the dash that runs down to the neutral safety switch, along with a lamp plug-in and a wire that already exists for this guy. There is a, a wire that already is a pre-wired deal that is gonna end up going back into the speedometer to turn the four wheel drive light on and off. I dig it, this is a really well thought out kit. So yeah, I'm probably, I'm gonna say first time fumbling through this, I am six hours in a completed dash. The only thing I have left to do is plug up the appropriate gauge guys and actually pin them out again it comes with the molex connectors a complete schematic of how everything pins out should be really straightforward um, pretty much at this point i am ready to bundle this this is actually bundled and secured to the dash itself i'm going to slide the dash in here get everything secured to the dash and properly in place and we can put the dash back in this guy record time So here we are back at our kit. Um, for the gauge cluster, it comes with this gauge cluster specific install kit. And basically what it allows for, so 
If you wanted to set up an aftermarket gauge cluster, basically you can plug this guy into the existing connector on the harness, pin these guys out to your gauge cluster, and you can still actually remove a round gauge cluster without actually having to unscrew the ring terminals from each individual gauge. On the factory gauges, that's not a big problem, but what is cool about with the factory gauges is obviously you've got these guys. They also include the proper Molex connectors and pins to pin out the gauges. Let's see what they say. Cluster connector A for temp and oil. See page 16 for detailed connections. It gives you the color code and label for each individual set of wires with the connector and it gives you a full pinout of the actual back of the factory gauge. Now, that's a pretty big deal. Previously, the only way that you would have this information is to either find it online or have access to it in a service manual, which obviously we do. But again, that would be more time that I would have to spend digging through a factory service manual and referencing all the proper connections. It's all laid out right here. So literally all we're gonna have to do is go in, plug these guys up to its appropriate connector, crimp on a couple of the correct terminals for the gauges and pin them out as it shows and plug them up and we're done. Another win, that is definitely a big plus. All right, so we've got the pigtails plugged in for the uh, appropriate instruments, gauges, what have you. One thing that is worth mentioning is they do not even tell you how to hook up the ammeter which is kind of reasonable. Honestly, um, that's another thing that we probably should mention. Um, the ammeter a lot of times can be cause for concern. Um, and I think a lot of people misunderstand how an ammeter works. So all the power feeding through the vehicle runs through the ammeter first. And it is a measure of how much draw is on the system as the vehicle is being used. Now the ammeter is only rated for like 60 amps. If we're being completely honest, the factory wiring system was barely good enough to run headlights, wipers, AC, all at the same time. Now, definitely you add in speaker, add in a big system, an electrical fuel pump, like you're, you're past what you can even do. Not to mention what you're doing to the alternator. I think that's another thing that people don't think about is what the alternator is actually rated for. Alternators are rated for a specific amperage output. Um, when you upgrade the alternator on one of these things, you need to add a means of getting power back to the battery, not through the factory system, or you're gonna cause issues. It's a conversation for another day, but worth mentioning. Um, again, we could put an ammeter in this thing, but we had, would have to kind of reconfigure some of the harness. And honestly, I just don't think it's worth doing. What we will use is one of the, it's a, du it's a dual USB car charger port with a built-in LED bolt meter inside of it. it actually displays voltage. You're not running the ammeter, you're not reconfiguring this harness to run an ammeter, which technically shouldn't really be continued to be used with something that you're trying to update anyway. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and get on with the pinning out of the gauge plugs. All right, so moving on with the next piece of the puzzle for the scout wiring harness. These pieces of the harness plug-in are actually three different sections and they all snap together. I think that's gonna be pretty obvious when you open the kit. These actually plug into the main um, fuse panel. So what they have done is they have included some other circuits and they haven't gone ahead and pinned them out because I guess they don't wanna make assumptions about what you're gonna actually run. Two of them that we are gonna be using, one is the alternator exciter wire and the other one is gonna be the electric choke. Um, they do send the wires in the, in the kit, they're just not already pinned out because you may be running fuel injection and not need an electric choke, so rather than to have a loose wire, they just don't put it in there. And again, you could be running a one wire alternator so you don't need the uh, alternator exciter. We, in fact, do need though, Looking at the manual, <clears throat> we've got wire M, which is the alternator exciter. That's gonna pin out 
two spots above the face on the second row, directly below the green wire. So that puts us there. And then our choke wire pins out above the blue wire, which is right there. And these are going to stay with the engine group. So pretty much is literally that easy to add those two circuits. Um, I'm gonna get all this stuff sorted out and loomed. Uh, we have some braided split loom that we like to use. Also, if you are running braided loom and you don't have one of these, do yourself a favor and get one. I'll show you how these guys work. They're super nifty. That's our engine harness. We're gonna put a couple pieces of tape down through it just to kind of keep everything bundled together. That way we don't end up with a big jumbled up mess when we get all these guys rolled out. And I'm actually gonna throw a curveball in this video. Um, I have hired a new guy in the shop, young kid, very promising, very, um, very good kid. And I think we're actually gonna let him finish installing this harness, which is pretty much, it. once I get done, will be really just terminating headlights, taillights, and markers. Nonetheless, should attest to the ease of installation on this. And we're actually gonna film it and let him kinda come into the scene and give him a shot at, at um, YouTube stardom. Just kidding. All right, so this is our headlight feed. It's all completely pinned out. Everything that we need is already there. We don't have to add or remove anything. 33 feet of taillight harness. There is definitely no need to worry about having enough. You could order, you could wire a, uh, a crew cab full size pickup with this thing. All right, so then we've got one more run to loom out on the taillight harness. This is gonna be one long run. It's gonna actually run across the firewall over to about the inner fender and then down and back. So we're gonna guesstimate how much loom we need. And this little tool, super handy if you're running split loom and you don't have one, definitely recommend buying one. Lock it onto the wire, slip your loom over the little nub, and then you just pull, and it'll lay the wire in there very neatly and very nice. Until it slides out. This all taped up and then we can actually start laying it in on the vehicle and get a look at how everything's gonna lay and get it dressed in and ready to wire. shop back on the wiring harness on this little scout too that we've been banging on we're gonna button up a few things but first I want to introduce Austin Austin is our new employee that I promised to introduce in the last video believe it or not Austin is one of the meanest slide trombone players east of the Mississippi oh man look at that today we're banging on this harness and a couple of things that we're gonna talk about we are gonna do the headlight section the taillight section now again, this harness is modeled after the later model Scout 2 wiring harnesses. So the sockets come pre-pinned out and with new sockets on them for this kit specifically. So if you are not using the late model style buckets, you are gonna have to pin out your original steel chrome buckets for to suit your needs. Um, this is actually a 79 truck, so we're gonna go ahead and throw a set of these in. It actually currently has the chrome ones in there. Not right for this truck, we're gonna fix it. Austin has actually already taken the time and wired the charging circuit and the engine. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take a second to brag on Austin. He did a really good job with it. Uh, I'm super happy with the way it looks. I'll do an overview of that so you guys can see the engine compartment, how it laid out. So Austin, what did you think about the quality of the harness, how it was laid out? What are your overall thoughts on what you've done at this harness so far? Uh, the quality of the harness is very nice. Uh, it lays out really, really well. Um, it's very easy to follow along with the instructions on where everything goes. So do you feel like somebody at home, like a novice, as long as you had some mechanical and some electrical experience, you think it'd be something somebody could do at home? Oh yeah, definitely. Cool, yeah. So also that's my general impression with the harness. This is laid out 
exactly like the factory harness for the Scout, and I do feel like it's really well put together. Like I said, we're gonna jump into some wiring. I'm gonna tackle the taillight section, and we're gonna let Austin do the headlight section, get all the turn signals laid out. Um, one thing that I, like I've mentioned throughout the video, everything comes pretty well laid out. This already has the marker sockets, taillight sockets. We've got new sockets for the markers. This is cool, man. This is all good stuff. Like you don't have to rob pieces that have came off of your scout that somebody's cut and spliced 32 times. I think it's a good kit. So we're gonna jump into it. So another day in the shop, we have actually got the electrical system largely buttoned up on this thing. Headlights are in, turn signals are in, marker lights, tail lights, all that stuff. Everything went together pretty well. We did have a couple gremlins. What did we end up having to track down? Um, had to, we had a neutral safety switch issue. Uh, we wasn't getting reverse lights when it was clicked into reverse. Um, ended up being a bad switch. And then uh, we did have a, got a couple gauge issues too we had to chase down. So. But other than that, for a harness, for a complete harness front to back, like the, the ability to plug everything up and 99.9% .9 of it work was really, really great. Um, I honestly, I like the harness. I would do, I, I don't think I'll ever put a quick wire back in a scout too, which is what we used to use. And that's not a dig on quick wire. Quick wire harnesses make really good harnesses. Um, I've literally been using them for years, but American Auto Wire really did their homework with this kit. And I just think for the ease of installation, I think that's the way to go on a Scout 2. What for do you sure. think? Yeah, for sure. Cool. All right, well, we're gonna give you a quick overview of this thing, let you hear it fire up, let you see everything work, and then we'll put this guy to bed. So as you saw, everything is functioning as it should. Um, I'm happy with the results, like we said. And again, I can't really say anything negative about the kit. It was well put together and it worked well. Austin, who had literally never touched wiring on a Scout, was able to wire in. You ended up doing the headlights and the taillights and the engine. Yep. Only thing I wired on the truck was a dash. So everything looks good and clean. And if you take your time, um, it lays in nice. The dash harness lays out like it's supposed to, but you're kind of responsible for the cleanliness of the rest of it. That is one thing that I will say that you definitely should, with any wire, and take your time and attention to, to detail on it, make it look nice. But uh, I think that's all we've got. Till next time, what are we gonna do next time? We can't tell them too much, can we? Mm, we'll just say it has something to do with our modern sports car-ish. Ish, ish. <laughs> <laughs>